So I went and bought another little toolbox, 60 bucks on Kijiji. You know, can't pass up these deals. It was a, I think it was a pilot that owned this. There's the aircraft handbook. And he's probably long gone because this dates back to 1958. This is a 1961 edition. There you go. Third printing, January 61. And the other book as well is that 1961 written somewhere in there. On the second page. I saw it somewhere. Oh, there it is at the bottom. February 1961. Printed in the United States. It's a little aeronautical vest handbook. I guess if you're going to crash land, you'd want this in your pocket. You can calculate your trajectory. I don't know what. Something. Save your life, maybe. It's got all kinds of math, I guess. Pilots have to be very good mathematicians. I know that. Tons of stuff in here. There's a jet engine, gas turbine, <laughs> dual rotor, turbo fan. Anyway, maps of the world. Okay. So, what else we got here? Oh, there was something else in here. Where is it now? Anyway, I'll go through quick. There's a nice stare at feeler gauge. That's mint. It's probably 50, 60 years old, this, but it's just like new. All my old ones are ready for the garbage. You can't read the numbers on them anymore. So if you keep it out of the moisture, it'll last forever. Some files. Uh, looks like an old toothbrush from the 1940s. It's probably what toothbrushes used to look like. That's kind of cool. That must be what that is. The little pincher thing. What is this here? This is awesome. I've been looking at buying one of these for a long time. That's a Sterrett number 281. It's a American, what is it? American Standard Wire Gauge at the bottom here. It just won't focus again. Come on, baby. Come on. Anyway, trust me. Oh, there we go. Okay. And Sterrett. And on this side, it's got something. I think that must be sheet metal. Anyway, kind of cool. Uh, a little ruler. Mostly junk. Most of the stuff I'll have to th you know, throw out. These are nice, but little tiny pliers. So I bought this to put my tools in. For my new lathe at the workshop. This is a Lufkin. These are really great measuring tapes. That's back when Lufkin made really good quality tapes. You can see it's leather bound. Just like the day it was made. And it's old. I've got another one like this. These are really nice. And and I wasn't until I was almost you know home when I realized. It's a Kennedy 620, so it's a three drawer. It's a bit small, but uh, still got the front panel. It's green instead of brown. Most of those Kennedys are brown. But this one's just mint. It's got the guy's initials, but I guess when he's looking in the mirror, he wrote that. It's backwards. You know, the box is nice, but this is really what I was after. I got a quick change tool post and a knurling tool and you can put a cutter in here as well and then I've got the boring bar holder and these are all tool cutters I don't have a parting tool holder but uh, I can buy just that one it'll fit this these these aren't expensive this whole setup here what you see is probably almost three hundred dollars with tax here in this area so I saved a little bit of money I bought I bought all this for one one forty cash, no tax. It's a tax that kills us in this country. But I've got an issue here. This is what came with it. It's a blank. Uh, you gotta size that for your uh, your lathe. So this being a little Craftsman uh, twelve inch, that's the size I need right there. And this is made to go on the lantern to a post that came with it. 
So I took the lantern apart. Here's all the parts. For the lantern, that bolt goes in the bottom. Then this goes in here, and then your tool goes in in the hole. It's a really nice little tool. It cuts really nice. I will use this. I'll keep that and I'll use it. Look at how small that is. Makes my uh, my lathe at home. This makes it look like minuscule. But I got to cut that blank down to this size here. I haven't measured it yet, but I think what I'm going to do is just pop this right off. There's just two nuts here, two bolts. And then you just lift that right off, take it home. And I've got a mill. I've got the horizontal mill at the, my home shop and I'm going to I'm going to machine down that that blank to fit so this is what I need. That's what I need in that little groove there. And this is what I have. So slight difference in size. And the bolt fits through there and there's a little tiny bit of space. So that's my project next. I can't use any of that stuff until that's done. So that's next. So if you've never seen a quick change tool post, it's just a there's a little cam inside there and this little square rectangular piece comes out and clamps that the tool holder on the side here in place. Just a quick rotation of this. You can kind of see it going in and out there. And this is just cheap Chinese stuff and a Loris like this is 750 bucks so that's not an option for me. It's out of the budget. So I'll get that piece machine to fit in there. And then I can use it. But uh, I think what I'll do is take everything back to the shop. I'll take the post itself. I'll leave all the tool holders. And I'll take the uh, compound right off and bring it with me. So this is the first time I've had these, these together here. I can compare them side by side. This is off the Atlas little compound and the tool post, the lantern tool post and the tool holder and this is my South Bend lathe compound lantern much bigger even the wrench, the little 5 16 wrench here's the wrench for the uh, South Bend so, and it fits everything, it fits the and the lock for the carriage is over here I don't know if you can see it, it's on the other side of that uh, the only thing I notice is a little bit bigger is this dial is quite a bit bigger than this little mini dial here. So, a lot of guys upgrade and get bigger dials. This this dial back here, can't quite see it there, but uh, this dial is a nice size. So it's, I believe this is a, a tool room lathe because of this dial. I think it's original, but I'm not sure. This one being so small, it's hard to see. So now they get to the job at hand here. We got to mill this down to fit in this little slot. But as you can see, if it was going to go on the south end here, it would job be done by now. You just slide it in, and bolt it up. The guy I bought this tool post from, he uh, had a south end 13 inch, so. But he had uh, he had a shim underneath to get it up high enough because even his holders, tool holders, were adjusted as high as they go, and it still wasn't high enough to reach the center. So that's why he up he bought another tool post, and that's why this one was for sale. So this should be the perfect size for the little uh, atlas. It's made that's got a range of six to twelve inches. So let's get started. We're gonna get this piece done. So I marked everything out. That line's got to be cut right through. And there, if I could leave a little shoulder on there. And I got to go down about that much. So that's what I got to leave. So I'm going to see if I can cut that on the saw a little bit. Cut a little bit off each side with the saw. And then get a lot less machining. There we go. Now my little cheap old saw. Save me a little bit of time. You can see it 
see the scribe mark. I think you can see it. Rough loss on there just in case. So there we go. And I'm right on. I left a lot on this far side. Could have cut a little closer, but I didn't want to take a chance. I'm going to drop some parallels in here and let's get that done. Okay, I just got the other side to do now. some deburring to do and we'll fit it up and see how it works. Should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. It's looking good, let's try it out. Okay, it looks like I made it a little a little too I didn't even need to leave this high spot down the middle but I, I figured it would you know, give it a little extra strength, but both sides fit. It just doesn't fit down the middle. So. Just it's better to leave a little too much than take too much off. So I'm gonna go back and I just take uh, maybe four or five thousandths off one side. Okay, I took about four or five thousandths off, and look at that. It's perfect. This may not thread in because it's a little pushed over there. But, uh, if I force it with a wrench, it'll go. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll run it through backwards. See how the milling it there it pushed it in a little bit on the sides. So that job's done now. Just gotta start using it. Okay, well I'll bring it down, put it in a vise, and we'll force that on there. And I mean that should be ready to go now. Really nice fit. Left lots on there. Lots of metal. Pretty well fits the whole entire. <laughs> so that's nice. Stronger than the original one. So that's what came with it with the lantern tool post. This little one. And that's what I just built out of that blank. 
Well, we're, they're calling for five to ten centimeters in the next couple of days. And Tuesday, they're supposed to be 15 centimeters. That's six inches of snow coming on Tuesday. So I'll be back doing what I normally do this time of year, plowing snow. So this is a little bit different. This is what I like to do. I like to do different things. And uh, I'm to get that little atlas lathe running and uh, try it out. Thanks for watching.